the lymphatic system this is for you grade 11 this is chapter 30 section 6 and this is the last part of the chapter the lymphatic system your body has two transport networks that circulate the fluid. the first is the circulatory system the circulatory system is responsible for bringing of course gases and nutrients to the cell the second is the lymphatic system while the system also helps to distribute nutrients, its main jobs are to absorb excess fluids, fight diseases, and to carry waste products away from the cells. These two systems work so closely together that almost everywhere there are blood vessels and also lymph, lymph vessels. The lymphatic system consists of a complex network of organs, vessels, and nodes throughout the body. The system collects excess fluid that leaks out of the blood capillaries into the area between the cells. This fluid, which is called interstitial, which means in between the cells, brings nutrients to the cells and removes the wastes. About 90% of the fluid returns to the capillaries. Up to 3 liters per day remain outside the blood vessels. Without the lymphatic system, your body would begin to swell as more fluid becomes trapped in the tissues. The system prevents these problems through a two-step process. First of all, it collects the fluid and filters it to remove the dead cells and microorganisms. And then it returns the cleaned fluid to the circulatory system. The lymphatic circulation begins when the fluid between the cells enters the lymphatic capillaries where it becomes known as the lymph. So the lymph is this fluid that was trapped in between the cells and now it is going to be collected by the lymphatic system. The lymph then flows into larger vessels within the lymphatic system. Without a heart to pump the fluid, the vessels rely on the contractions of the skeletal and the smooth muscles to circulate the lymph. And also, the lymphatic system contains many valves that make sure that the fluid circulates in one direction only. Here, as you see, there are the veins and there are the arteries, and these are the lymphatic vessels. For the arteries and the veins, there is the heart to push the blood through them. And as we, you know, when we talked about the veins, we also said that the veins had valves in them to make sure that every time the blood is pushed upwards, it doesn't return downwards. The same is for the lymphatic vessels. The lymphatic vessels, they have the muscles around them to push the blood through them, the lymph through them, and also they have valves that prevent the return of the lymph through them. From the vessels, the lymph collects in small rounded structures are co that are called the lymph nodes. So here as you see, these are the lymph vessels and they contain the valves that allow the passage of the blood in one direction and then it prevents, it prevents its return. Then they are going to this fluid, it is going to collect in the lymph nodes. The, this is one of the lymph nodes. What happens here? The nodes filter the lymph and trap bacteria, viruses, fungi and cell fragments. Specialized immune cells ingest and destroy this organic material the vessels then carry the lymph out of the nodes. In the last stage of the journey, the lymph returns to the circulatory system. Two large vessels, one on either side of the body, enter veins located near just under the collar bones, the color bones. The lymph is returned to the blood and becomes part of the circulatory system again. When the lymphatic tissue and nodes are damaged or, or removed, the lymph cannot drain normally from this area. The result will be a swelling, which means that this area is going to increase in size. And this swelling is going to be due to accumulation of fluid. The swelling can be controlled by exercise, pressure bandages, or garments, and massage. These treatments exert pressure on the tissues and nose, uh, nodes to push the lymph back to the vessels. Remember, because we said that the lymph vessels, they work they uh, function because of the presence of the muscles around them and because of the valves that prevent the return of the lymph through the vessels. Remember that the lymphatic system is a major part of the immune system. Three structures in the lymphatic system, the tonsils, the thymus, and the spleen, 
also function as part of the immune system. Each of these structures has specialized functions that help the body to defend itself. The tonsils are the lymph nodes that are present at your throat. Okay, they are present at the back of your throat. These nodes, they help to filter out the bacteria and viruses that have escaped the body's outer defenses. Of course, the bacteria and viruses that enter through your nose and mouth, they are going to be trapped in your tonsils. The thymus is located behind your chest bone and is important too in developing certain types of white blood cells. These cells, they help the body fight pathogens, parasites, and other types of foreign organisms. Some immature lymphocytes, which are the white blood cells, migrate from the bone marrow to the thymus. So, we have the tonsils at the back of the throat. We have the thymus behind your chest bone, and it's responsible for uh, producing lymphocytes. Also, some immature lymphocytes, my lymphocytes which are not totally developed, they migrate from the bone marrow to the thymus where they develop the ability to recognize specific microorganisms. Most of these cells leave the thymus and circulate through the lymphatic system. While the biggest lymphatic organ, in the largest lymphatic organ in the lymphatic system is the spleen. Its main job is to filter and clean the lymph of cell fragments and abnormal tissue. It also contains many lymphocytes and other white blood cells that destroy harmful bacteria and foreign organisms. So, this way we finished chapter 30 and this is all what you need to study for your exams.